Hello, welcome to Sky Bite Size with me, Dan Cox, aka The Chief. Um, once again, thanks for tuning in, really appreciate it. Whilst you're here, if you could give us a like and subscribe, I would appreciate that also. Um, I'm just going to look ahead at the game week ahead, uh, have a quick weekend review, including some bonus points, um, transfer plans and any captains for this week. Um, the December fixtures are out now as well. Um, I'll probably do that in a separate video because if I do it on here, it won't be bite sized that'll go on for ages. So I'll try to do another video this week looking at some of those. Um, and then uh, we'll just go through some questions, talking points, and then I'll finish up with the uh, bite sized league table. Here's the uh, start of the weekend's results. So another clean sheet for Liverpool. Just made some notes here. Van Dyke, 96 passes. Matip, 106 passes. A bit annoyed with Matip. I did consider having him, but. He's always been one of them players you'd have him in, then he'd get injured, and as you bring him in, then you take him out. So just avoided him, and he's just played pretty much every game. Um, I thought Gomez or uh, Canate would have been in, but he's still he's just getting tier two pass in every game and racking up the points. So that's a bit annoying. Salah, unbelievable man of the match. Southampton beat Leeds. Um, Leeds weren't far off passing, but no one got passing. Uh, Norwich, Brighton, only Dunk just scraped. Tier 1 passing, but another clean sheet for Brighton, so those with Dunk would be happy. Man City kept another clean sheet. Again, Laporte are put in the same boat as Matip, not maybe so injury prone, but just a bit of a doubt as whether Stones would be in this, that and the other. So I've avoided him and he's he's pretty much played every game and been racking up the passing. So um, that's another one. That's one of those, both of them, Matip and Laporte, I'll bring them in now, they'll be out of the team. So um, I think I missed the boat there, but that's annoying. Um, But yeah, another clean sheet for Man City. Leicester beat Man U 4-2. Tielemans uh, got the shot, shots bonus, passing bonus, man of the match goal. Great pick and he's a good price. I think he's 8.7, 8.6, something like that. Vardy, goal, tier one shots. Um, just unbelievable. Vardy's another one I'd avoided and um, just can't stop scoring, can he? What's he? He's got seven goals out of eight starts. It's just... Um, Unbelievable. He's always one who I'd bring him in and then he'd stop scoring. But um, I'm regretting not having him, to be honest. But then he's, I did check, he's only in 5.8% of the top 1,000 teams. So um, considering the points he's got, not many people have gone for him either. So um, maybe I have overlooked him a bit, but we'll get onto that in a little while. Um, Villa, Wolves, that was a, I thought Villa on for a clean sheet and then Wolves scored three in the last 10 minutes. Um, Huang, who think people have gone for, no points for him really. Nothing. Um, Brentford v Chelsea. Christensen got tier two passing. Rudiger missed out with a back injury. Hopefully he's back. Mendy with the tier two saves, clean sheet, man of the match. He had a he had a bit of a stormer. Annoyingly, Lukaku again, fourth game, Premier League game, no goals. Annoying. Going to give him another chance. Well, I say I'd give him one more chance, but they've got Norwich, Newcastle, then Burnley. If you, you know, you got to keep him for those three games, really, but. So annoying that he's just not been doing anything. He's in 56.7% of the top thousand. So, um, you know what I mean? There's quite a few of us will be hoping he does get in the get in the goals on there on Saturday. On to Sunday's games there. Nothing for Antonio. Yellow card. Um, no, a lot of people captained him on Sunday. So that's disappointing for them. Um, Spurs 3-2 win over Newcastle. Um, I had Harry Kane. I felt he should have got more than the 10 points, to be honest. I was... When he's just disappointing, really, yeah, should be happy with the goal and that. But I was hoping for more, more than just a goal. But I suppose there's something at least. Um, so going back to the West Ham game, Rice got tier two passing. I think he is a, a solid pick. He's been getting passing a fair bit, seven point four million. Um, I think he's a good choice. Um, Spurs dominated the passing really, and the tackles in that game. I know it is Newcastle who do give up a lot of. You know, pass and bonus to to the opposition, but still, that was a lot. And it was ten men, but I'll um I'll just get the card up for um the Spurs game. You can see there, Hoiberg, ninety nine passes, nine tackles, great, and an assist. So he was in the points. Even Skip there as well. I know they're not going to do it every week because they don't play Newcastle every week. But some <laughs> I can't remember ever seeing so many players get tackle bonus in a game, but um. There you go. I just thought that was interesting, so I'd load it up. I didn't load up last night's result, the Arsenal Palace game, but Gallagher, tier one shots and tackle bonus right at the end. Man of the match, 
great for those that captained. I didn't. I went for White, who finished on 56 passes. So, oh, close. And I thought he nearly got an assist at the end, but I sort of think it hit Martinelli and then keeper saved and then came out. So I was thinking I was, might have got something, but I captained White. And I thought, oh, I should have gone for Gallagher, but what can you do? Um, a lot of people had Aubameyang, so they, they brought him in, got a goal. So they'd have been happy with that. Hopefully, you know, they'll get some more points on Friday. Obviously, don't want that because I, I haven't got him. But Aubameyang's ownership in the top 1,000 went from 9% up to 47.7%. Um, it's brought into over 5,500 teams just on the day. Smith Rowe went into over 2,000 teams and Saka went into over 2,000 teams. So a bit guttering for them to see him go off injured and um, not not sure on his availability for Friday. But, you know, fingers crossed for those that brought him in, he'll be he'll be back for that. This was the bonus points for the weekend. So you can see there, said Hoiberg. He got double bonus, as did Skip uh, and, and Dombele. So all Spurs, top three there. Not, they're not going to do it every week, but it's just uh, just to show you there. Tielemans said he's, I think he's a great, great pick. 8.7, 8.7 million. And Gallagher again continues. I think that's his third man of the match award now. Um, just, again, another great pick. For those that just didn't go with an Arsenal and just went with him, then... That's unbelievable last night, really. Um, Rodri, you can see for yourself. You can pause these. Gooey, gooey, gooey. I'll call him from Palace. Got Parson again last night. I think he's a tad expensive at 7.2 mil. If he was cheaper, I might have him in. But I think 7.2 is a lot to, you know, he's going to get passing bonus more often than not, I feel. But I don't think they're going to be getting too many clean sheets. So I think it's a void for me. Rice, as I mentioned there, 7.4 million. I think he's good, good price. Lee's Mello, Norwich, um, tackles bonus again. He's very cheap as well. That'll allow you to do some other stuff. 6.7 if you got Gilmore and a bit fed up with him not playing and that, you could uh, you know go down to him because at least he is playing and picking up some uh, some bonus points there. But i say you can see the rest for yourself there. Right, looking into this week. So again, starts with uh, Arsenal against Villa. You should already have someone in place for that, you know, if you... Unless you're skipping it, you know, I think I've got Ben White, uh, not expecting more than two, two, well, I'd take two points now, to be honest, as long as it's not a one or a minus or something like that, so I'll take him. Um, Saturday, Lukaku, going to be my captain, did see some stuff today that, um, you know, he's tired and this, that and the other, so I'm recording this on Tuesday night, so hopefully he won't play in the Champions League tomorrow night, and they play against Norwich. Um we see the lineup anyway, so if he's not starting, you can make someone else your captain. But he's my captain now, unless he doesn't start. Um, I'm not too sure what I'll do if he doesn't start. Um, maybe Rafinha if he's back, um, or a Man City. Got Diaz, Cancelo, someone like that. He could could put in. Um, I think that's about it for Saturday. We could even go for a Chelsea defender. The beauty is we get to see the lineup, so um, you know at least you don't have to gamble. Sunday, West Ham v Spurs. A lot of people have Antonio or Kane. Um, Brentford v Leicester. If you, you're looking to bring in Vardy, you could do that on Sunday. Bring him in. They've got some good games coming up. So they've got Brentford, Arsenal, Leeds, Chelsea, Watford, Southampton, Villa, Newcastle in the next sort of run of games. If you're thinking about Vardy, you know, he's not owned by many. I think he's going to keep that up. He's You know, you could bring him in for Sunday. Man U v Liverpool, the late kickoff. <clears throat> I think a lot of people might just go Salah captain. I've got Salah and Kane. Um, I was always thinking Kane, but I think the form Salah's been in, United can't seem to keep the clean sheet. I think I might go for Salah. And um, that's it for this weekend. This should be pretty straightforward as long as Lukaku starts. I've got a wall of questions here. I just loaded everything up. So thanks to everyone who sent the question in. So Hornet. If you have a striker spot free, would you go Tony or Bueno on Sunday for a Brentford transfer in? Um, well, Bueno's a midfielder, so you didn't need to worry about that. I, I don't think I'd bring Tony in. Bueno, he's an option. He could, If you don't have Saar, that'll cover off that Watford-Brentford game in a next month or so. Steve Wright, best defender to move White onto. I'm going to have this myself. Um, money's no issue for him he's already got Rudiger and Diaz um, Van Dijk, Cancelo I think move on to them I just can't wait to get rid of Ben White held him for all this time for these two games and um, unless he scores and gets a clean sheet on Friday it's not been a successful uh, hold Julian Wardle 
people thinking about moving up to two two up top, but are we overlooking Vardy? Or have we missed the boat? Iniacho could even come into the reckoning. Yeah, I think Vardy, he just keeps scoring, doesn't he? He's just annoying. But that'll be one of them ones. You'll bring him in and then he won't. But I, I can't see him can't see him not scoring. He's just been on fire. So, um, yeah, no, I think he is. I've definitely overlooked him. Uh, Oli Poole, he's currently skipping Wolves v Everton and Southampton v Villa. Is it bad to avoid these two in a row? He only fancies Martinez from Villa and we'd rather keep Mendy in goal. Yeah, I can see that. He's got Aubameyang captain Friday, so we don't need to captain to cover that. Um, it's not ideal, but... Well, actually, now the fixtures have come out. I think Everton have got a couple of single game days in the future. So if you've got Gray or something like that, I think that'll cover cover them off. I, I don't like missing days, but even that Southampton Villa, I don't have anyone. Do I, you know? Do I want to have a Southampton or Villa player on the team long term? I don't know if I do. Do I want to use two transfers to bring someone in and out? I'm not sure what to do that either. So um, I might skip it at the minute. I might change my mind if someone like Watkins or Ings is on a bit of form by then. Um, you know, that'll be one to decide on the day. But you know, I don't like missing days to be honest. Uh, Josh, he's still got Ward Prowse. Would you move him on for someone like Mbuemo? I already have Martinez for the single game. So he's he's covered there. He's got someone for that Saints Villa game. Um, yeah, I'd probably move Ward Prowse on then. He ain't quite been hitting the uh, pass and bonus and that like like he did in previous seasons. So yeah, I think so. Tielemans is about the same price. So if you can get to him, I'd do that. Hakin, he's got Pogba and Ronaldo and I don't know if I should jump ship or stick. Um... I think I'd get rid. I think I'd get rid of both. I don't think they've got the best fixtures coming up. I think you're definitely going to want a Manchester United player in the future because they've got some single game days in December, January. Um, but yes, have a look at the fixtures and then I think I think come off now and then I think you're going to have to go back onto a Manchester United player. Uh, John, best replacements for Ndidi. I've still got him myself. Um, near the midfield is Hoiberg. Um, I just like how he ticks over. Depends on your money, really. Um, Rice, if you go cheaper, Rice is cheaper. He's 7.4. So that, if you've got a bit more money, you can get up to Tielemans. But I, I know he is about a million more. Um, Martin Muldoon, he's got a plan here. So Ronaldo to Ings to Kane to Ronaldo. Yeah, that would, you know, you're going to need Manchester United back. Ings would cover off those couple of games. Kane, I think, would be a, he's going to be a cap, decent captain shout in a couple of days. So... He's made a plan. Robert Wright. Am I a mug for keeping Alonso on my team? We're going to see if he starts next game. If not, I'll take him out as they are early kickoff. Yeah. If he doesn't start, you can move him on. Um, it's tricky. We sort of did worry that with Chilwell. Um, he's a good price, 7.9. But I think I've got Christensen myself and Rudiger. And I'm now sort of, I know Rudiger was injured, but we'll see what happens Saturday. But I think I'm just going to find myself more frustrated with the Chelsea defenders like, I think he's worse than Guardiola for rotating, so um, might be looking to move on. So yeah, I think it's probably for the best to move on. Chilwell's come in and done well. Uh, Paul Reader, ideally, how many transfers would you want to have left at this stage? I think as long as you're above the average for like your brand, your banding. So um, I but personally, I think anything 32 or more is great. So, you know, about 32 is about I would think it's about average, just as my guess. Um. You know, it depends if you use more. I know some of the guys in the top 100 you have got 28 left, but they've got the points in the board. But, you know, it depends how you use the transfers you've got in hand. But no, I think about 32 or so is is about average. Um, Sky Addict FPL. Tielemans a good Sky player, but as the lack of captaincy days we, means we ignore him and Leicester for a while still. Now I just I say I have overlooked him, but I think Vardy and Tielemans are, are good picks. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't need them as a captain. If they're still going to be bringing the points in, then uh, why not? And then Gordon Bell. What's a better option? Double Chelsea defence, double City defence, or two defenders from both teams. As long as you've got the ones that are playing, that's all right. Um, I just don't know, really. Um, I think I'd probably rather have a double City defence, Cancelo Diaz. I think they're more nailed than Christensen, Rudiger, Azpilicueta. Um, you know, Chilwell, something like that. I think they're all sort of risk of rotation more so yeah double city for me just finish up with a bite-sized league table there uh johnny belfast still top he's been top pretty much since the start 828 points uh tom powell second 822 
Mark Blick, 806. Paul Reader, 798. And Gareth Solomon, 797. So all pretty tight there. They've all got about 100 more points than me, so they're all flying. But um, yeah, they're doing great. Um, and I say Johnny will be happy because he's uh, he's been top for a while. So just got another 30 odd weeks to go, mate, and you'll be uh, you'll have, we'll have this one. Right, that's it for this video. Just done a you know quick look ahead at the week coming. Um, I'm going to try and record something for the fixtures, the TV fixtures that are out. If you get a chance, try and have a look yourselves. And you know, there's so many single game days and three for ones and everything like this you can do. But try and have a look, see what you can do, what suits your team. And um, I'll also be back. I think Thursday night I'll do a stats pack. So all the transfers in and out, average transfers remaining. And um, ownership of the top 1,000 teams and anything else that pops up over the next night or two, if there's been any injuries in the Champions League or anything like that. So, again, thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll catch you in a couple of days.